Hello again. Um, since my last video got cut a little shorter than I'd like, uh, I made this second video, part two, and I ended the last video talking about inbreeding, I believe. But that was a few hours ago because it took a while for this to load. And I watched a scary movie, which I'm terrified about. But anyway, um, this is... Oh, okay, so we're looking at a picture of the Florida panther. And this is actually an endangered species according to our book, I believe. And um, the problem with the Florida panther is that since it's a small population, it had a greater chance of inbreeding with each other. So now, um, long, generations and generations after generations and generations of inbreeding has occurred, um, they all have similar genotype, uh, all of them have like pretty similar genotypes now, and they all actually have a homozygous recessive trait for in really poor quality sperm, and they have poor quantity of sperm, and this caused reproductive, um, <clears throat> Uh, a, like not reproductive success, and this cause of not re like unreproductive or reproductive unsuccessful reproduction. There we go. As far as fertility and whatnot goes, that eventually leads to the harm of the population of, um, yeah, of a species is known as inbreeding depression, and the, an inbreeding depression is exactly that. It's really harmful to a population, and eventually it could be detrimental, hence why with, um, this species, they're actually trying to breed them with other panthers outside of their home in Florida because they're trying to um, get new alleles and try to counteract that recessive allele so that they won't be completely, like they won't eventually become extinct. Oh, okay, so, and I do believe that's all I want to say about the Florida panther. So, Basically, keep in mind that with inbreeding or any type of non-random mating, this, like, non-random mating does not affect allele frequencies, okay? Non-random mating does not affect allele frequencies, but it does affect genotype frequencies. This is a really difficult, like, for me at least, it was a pretty difficult concept to wrap your head around because you're like, wait, what do you mean it doesn't affect allele frequencies, right? No, okay, so this is pretty much what I figured. Um, think about it like, like, okay, so with migration, you are directly um, taking individuals with different alleles, right? And you are mixing that into a population of alleles that are completely different. So you're directly introducing new alleles, right? So hence the allele, or you're taking out the, the like some of the other alleles. So you're directly affecting the allele frequency in a population. However, non-random mating does not affect the allele frequency in a population because you're not changing anything about the individuals in the population. You're not taking out certain alleles, so there's not a decrease in one allele. And you're not putting in, like, brand new alleles, right? But this selection process for mates, um, it can eventually affect allele frequencies. Because if you consistently, like, or if all the individuals consistently choose 
animals or mates with certain traits, then eventually that'll affect the allele frequency. So imagine in our population, half of the people are short and half the people are tall. We're not, no migration is going on, pretend there's no other um, factors, uh, but except non random mating, okay? So we have the same population. Um, we have the same amount of alleles because we're not changing the population. We're not taking out alleles, we're not um, putting in new ones, right? So in this population, we have 50-50 so far. Uh, 50 short people, 50 tall people. <laughs> yeah, it kind of is a small population, but pretend this makes sense. <laughs> and uh, like in theory. Um, so if non-random mating occurs and everybody, like, everybody likes tall people. <laughs> um, and people tend to mate more with tall people and things happen and generations and generations later um, are the results that we'll be looking at later. But so far, we have the same amount, we have the same allele frequency, we just have people preferring other, well, individuals preferring other individuals that are tall. And this will change the genotype frequencies because you'll see that there will be more um, tall alleles in the gene pool. Not necessarily that people will get the tall alleles, but there's a greater chance that people will get the tall alleles because people are mating more with tall people. So more tall alleles or genes um, will be passed down or there's a greater chance that you will get those tall alleles. Now, Generations and generations of mating with only tall people will eventually produce more and more tall people. And this production of more and more tall people will eventually affect the allele frequency so that there will be a higher allele frequency of tall people and a shorter allele frequency of short people. So um, I hope that kind of makes sense. That was a huge, or for me, it was the biggest concept in my chapter. So to Sum it all up, basically, migration affects allele frequencies in a population, or both populations, rather, especially with bidirectional migration. Non-random mating affects genotype frequencies, but does not affect allele frequencies. Non-random mating can affect allele frequencies after, like, long periods of time if people are consistent with preferring one um, phenotype. Okay, so that is my lesson, and I hope you guys got it. If you didn't, please comment or text or call or Facebook me or something, and hopefully I'll be able to explain it to you, or I'll try my best. But yeah, okay. Thanks for watching.